Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. Going to take some time here showing you the fun I had putting a beautiful nickel plating on the lever cap of this guy. Definitely want to check that out. This is the third video in the series I have on this particular block plane. The first one I did a deep dive and gave a little historical perspective on what this guy is. He's well over 100 years old. Definitely want to check that out. And in a second video I did a more traditional spruce up, clean up, tune up of this plane to turn him into a top performer. So you definitely want to check those guys out as well. So let's dive into it. I've been using this abrasive disc on my Dremel tool on the lever cap here. And when I started to hit the copper plating that was exposed, it was peeling off the nickel to show copper underneath it and then removing the copper. Kind of looks nickel plated and it looks like there's a copper over it and then nickel on top of that. I hit it with a wire brush that did a lot to remove the rust. Uh, then I hit it with a worn narrow belt sander. And unfortunately that belt sander, the edge of the belt dug in and put some grooves in the edge of this area that I then had to take some time to try to sand out. A little bit of a drum sander in 100, 150, 320, and then 600 grit. And then I polished it. When I refinished this Miller's Falls jack plane, I put a nickel plating on the lever cap using a nickel acetate bath. After doing a little more research, I think I'm going to use what's called a Watts bath. And I'm not sure why, but everybody seems to think a Watts bath is better. And I'm assuming it's because it probably gives you a better finish and it's not uh, very difficult to do. You can't get copper to stick very well to steel because copper is more noble, as they say. But nickel does. It takes a lot of time and energy to take a piece of iron or steel and polish it to the point you can simply nickel plate it and have it look great. It's actually a little easier to get the steel in good shape, put a nickel coating on top of that, and then a copper plate on top of the nickel plate. And the copper plate goes on relatively thick and it's soft, being copper. And it's easier to polish the copper that's on top of the nickel that's on top of the steel and get that to a really fine finish than it is to do the steel directly. And the depth adjuster wheel, as you can see, there's still copper on it, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up simply doing a nickel plate on this and calling it a day. And the Watts bath is essentially uh, distilled water, nickel sulfate, nickel chloride, and boric acid. I'm following the procedure from the YouTube channel Garage Science and I'd like to extend my thanks to that guy for putting together a great video on how to do this and I'd recommend if you're interested to check out his channel he goes into a lot more detail than I do. Okay I got 24 ounces of water in here and it's warm and I'm gonna pour in the nickel sulfate and we will stir this and I won't bore you with watching that. Next we will add the nickel chloride. Now finally the boric acid. Down over here I have uh, some muriatic acid, 50% with some distilled water. And I have already taken the time to pickle these. And for the power source I got this phone charger that has uh, adjustable voltage. And the anodes will be these two pieces of nickel here that I've used before. Okay, I have my two anodes on either side of the container. And just as a test piece, I have this piece of copper wire. And I'm going to swirl it around. But there you can see it's already taking on a silvery tone. Wow, that's coming out great. No complaints about that. Looks 100% better. Not brand new, but that's not my goal. I just want it to look nicer. Now we have this guy. That looks very nice. Definitely nickel. And finally, it's about a 30 second dip. And for my next trick, I'm going to put together a copper sulfate solution uh, using five tablespoons of this Zep root kill. This is pretty much copper sulfate citric acid to uh, apply a little bit of acidity and this is laxative the key ingredient here is uh, polyethylene glycol which acts as a uh, an agent to help the plating then some distilled water 
which is here 24 ounces and a tiny pinch of salt and this recipe comes from uh, Garage Science and I'd like to thank him for putting this together and making it easy to use so let's get to it okay this is 24 ounces of heated distilled water going to add five tablespoons of this root kill I'm going to be adding two tablespoons of citric acid and there's two finally an eighth teaspoon of the laxative and I don't have an eighth of a teaspoon measure so I'm gonna eyeball it with a quarter teaspoon and finally for the salt three crystals of kosher salt and then this part lever cap I have a ring of copper wire going around hooked up to the positive now we'll hook up the ground this is at three volts this has been a few minutes I've taken it out put it back in I'm stirring it now by hand and that looks like a pretty even coppery coat I think that's pretty good this is plating well I'm having trouble getting this area over here It's a pretty even copper coating. So here are the two pieces dried after the copper plating experiment. Definitely have copper on them. The next trick will be to see how much I can polish that up. Well I tried to polish up the copper. It seemed to almost take all the copper off. So I have this looking pretty good. I uh, have to say getting a bit of a mirror shine out of it. And I didn't record it because uh, I wasn't really sure what I was doing having a tough time getting it to look good. Eventually I figured out I don't think my plating times were long enough and I ended up putting it in the bath for 15 minutes at a time and you can see now it's got a pretty good shine on it. Definitely a nice coppery color. Uh, the back has a real orange tone to it. I ended up making a more elaborate cradle for the lever cap. I've washed it in the sink with soapy water I'm going to put it back in the cradle and I'm going to put it in the hydrochloric acid, the muriatic acid for just a handful of seconds. Positive lead goes on the anode. Take that out, give it a rinse in the distilled water and I put it in. The spoon side is facing the anode here. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Take it out of the cradle, you can see the marks on it. My best guess is the cradle uh, scavenges the plate, uh, so I don't quite get as even a plate as I would like to. And here you can see the cradle after a gazillion plating attempts. You can see plating doesn't necessarily go smooth. Next thing I do is bring it over to the sink and I give it a good scrubbing with the scrubber sponge and some soapy water to uh, start getting a shine on this. Okay, the plating marks from the cathode are nearly gone. You can see it's got a bit of a scratchy matte finish shine on it. Is I have some 600 grit uh, sandpaper that I lightly sand it with. Then I have some fine steel wool. Next I have extra fine steel wool. Copper polish. That's very old, but that seems to work. And there you have it. Well, and here it is partially assembled with the uh, copper on the lever cap, because I think it looks kind of cool. Well, I think I'm ready to move on to the next step. I've been at this piece for two or three weeks, and hopefully you can see the reflection of the lights pretty gosh darn close to my mirror finish and I'm good enough with that this piece I didn't spend as much time on this piece is not quite so important to be a mirror finish I didn't record a lot of the steps because they turned out to be not working very well and I got tired of uh, making recordings of things that didn't work but I would like to take a minute or two to summarize what I learned originally I had some pits and I thought the copper plating would fill in the pitting 
and it did, but it turned out to be quite an endeavor. If I had to do it again, I would probably spend a little bit of time trying to sand the pits out of the steel before I moved on. My initial copper plating, I did uh, about 15 minutes at 3 volts. I tried to do uh, thicker plating. I stepped up the voltage and I wasn't happy with those results. The copper plate that resulted was very uneven and very rough. So I ended up going with uh, longer plating times instead of 15 minutes, uh, something closer to 45 or an hour at 3 volts. And I polished and I ended up inadvertently getting a very thick copper plate and the pits that I was trying to fill in uh, weren't filling in. You can't really think about plating as filling per se. Uh, for somebody that's used to dealing with wood filler and caulking and bondo, plating doesn't work like that. <laughs> and finally I ended up sanding it all away and eventually I think I removed an awful lot of the really thick copper plate that I had built up. But lo and behold I did end up filling in a lot of the pits that were up here. And once I had the pits filled in, it was a matter of just uh, continuing to polish and buff and polish and buff some more. And I also thought about filling the pits in the copper-plated lever cap with solder. And I did this experiment. I twisted these wires together and I loaded up the twist with solder. And I attempted to see if I could copper plate over the solder. And I wasn't convinced this was a success. I also tried nickel plating it. Uh, neither of those seemed to work uh, with the solder that I had chosen. These were the abrasives I used. Uh, being a novice, I was paranoid that I might uh, sand through the copper plate down to the nickel and possibly beyond. So this is a worn piece of 220 grit. Then I had a worn piece of 320 and a worn piece of uh, 600. I also used Scotch-Brite pads and steel wool as a final polish. And once I got to the steel wool polish, I brought it over to my drill press where I have a buffing wheel. These here are the anodes. If you look carefully at these wires, they all started out as 14 gauge. And you can see the anode really did sacrifice itself. They got very thin. Here's a good indicator. I don't know how well that's showing up, but you can see right in here it's filament thin. And then here, this part was not in the bath. You can see that's how thick the wire was originally supposed to be. A fair amount of copper seemed to end up in the bottom of the container. So I have the lever cap here in the Watts bath. You can see that's coming out nice. Well, it's been about 15 minutes and I've been stirring and turning this on occasions. And it's looking pretty good. Well, I have this piece next in the bath, and I took a minute to shine up this piece, hit it with a little steel wool and buffing, and I think it looks sweet. Here are the two pieces after the nickel plating, and I think they came out pretty good. I put each of them in the nickel bath uh, twice, about 15 minutes a piece at uh, 3 volts and I polished and shined them up in between. This piece came out a lot better which is fine because this is really the showcase piece of the plane. And of course these two will go together like so. Alright, there is the lever cap back together finally. Well, that's all I got for this guy, and didn't she turn out like a beauty? I have other videos on this particular block plane. I have one where I did a deep dive, gave a little historical perspective on them. And I have another video where I did a more traditional spruce up, tune up, clean up, turn it into a top performer. Definitely want to check those guys out. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Leave a comment, like, subscribe if you will, and be safe, take care, and check you out on the next one.